Hi. <clears throat> I'll be reading two selections tonight. Violet discovered. Papers that had proclaimed search for missing teen continues raced to change their headlines for the morning edition. One reporter on the scene, too much a poet for his job, mused privately on the aptness of her name in this moment, a synchronicity almost beautiful, nearly perfect, everything about her death imbued with some shade of violet. The hikers had stumbled across her in the final minutes of sunset, where the restless peak flush sky had begun to settle under the cool purple fingers of evening. She lay sprawled like the child she nearly was, the deep cerise and heavy green leaves of fuchsia overhanging her like a mantle, ready to drop across her shoulders, the picnic plum still clutched in her hand, skin torn and flesh bruised, the fingerprint staining her collarbone, skin maroon mottled where her blood had settled against it and the strange pale mauve of the flesh it had abandoned, her legs too skewed and wandering paths that led the eye unwillingly to the place where they met, the crowning gash of flesh, magenta, fading. Last day. In the afternoon on the day the world ends, she decides not to poison his tea after all. The world is ending anyway. What steams and hazes around his face as he drinks rises only from the usual ingredients, the pale tincture of desire and the barely detectable taste of regret. She talks about the garden she meant to plant, the moonflowers that bloom in darkness, kalaniction, a curly atom, she says, savoring, the taste of it rough on her tongue. He says, too late now, the world is ending, nothing will take root. When they make love one last time, she pulls him in, wraps blind tendrils around him to prove him wrong. In the distance, a cloud mushrooms, something, somewhere, continues to grow. Thank you.